five minutes. I don't know if I can do it justice. So here's an elephant in the room that I have mentioned briefly but didn't quite address. Um, what does this stand for? Like, what is it wave of? Like, what is oscillating? I mean, something is oscillating. Like, something is doing the interfering and giving us these standing waves. But, you know, like, is it, I don't know, it is some kind of, um, let's see. Is there something within this box that could serve as a medium? All right, if you imagine building this experiment with the electric fields, this could be for Obino vacuum chamber. There's nothing in there except for this one particle, one charged particle that's been confined by the electric field. So. I remember you talking about the actual massive particle itself. Could be the one that's oscillating. All right, so you are saying that the particle itself is the medium. So the, if it's the medium, the particle itself must be spread out all over, right? So uh, let me, yeah, it, this is the confusing, unintuitive, paradoxical part of quantum mechanics. Let's just say that um, you somehow prepare your particle in this state. So I'm just going to give you the experimental facts because these are what's not controversial. <laughs> these are what I can tell you is true without any, you know, um, any caveat or any kind of hedging. So if I have this box, and let's say I have prepared my particle in a state that can be represented by this wave function. This, uh, this is my um, psi of x, and somehow my particle is prepared in this, um, you know, in this state. And if uh, our view is that um, it, what this wave function represents is this particle kind of smeared out all over, then we could say, oh, so this particle is literally sp uh, smeared out. There's some part of the particle here, some part of the particle here. So now you try to do this. You try to actually measure the position of the particle. Um, so you, you know, shine some light on it or you try to measure the position of the particle. Then when you actually detect the particle, what you would see is that um, you would see the particle at one particular location. The particle itself is not spread out. You don't see a kind of a smear of the particle over the entire space. You see that one location. But here's the kind of confusing thing. So you prepare the particle in the exact same state. You do the exact same experiment. And then next time, you actually detect a particle here. You do the exact same experiment again. Now you detect it here. Do it again. Now you detect it here. So, but this is, a, so this is what you see. Each time you detect a particle, the particle is definitely at one place. It's not actually spread out. Um, so what this wave is made of, um, I'm going to have to leave it as a mystery. It's not the particle itself being spread out. The particle is one, it's like, you know, think of an electron. Uh, I know in chemistry you guys talk about electron cloud, but even in electron cloud, electron is not literally spread out in the cloud. It's not, that's not the correct picture. But, um, so imagine doing this experiment thousands of times. Then this is actually what you would see. I'm going to just build up a kind of a histogram. So a histogram kind of looks, I don't know. I, I'm not doing this well. Uh, let me just draw out what the histogram looks like. Uh, something like this. I don't know. Sorry, I'm not drawing my histogram well. <laughs> um, so so the, uh, what you're counting is, um, so for each kind of a bean, each kind of location, how many times have you seen the particle there? So you do notice that you do see the particle most here and here. And do you see anything else? Yeah, you never see particle here or here or here. There are the nodes where the particle is never present. 
So this is one thing I can tell you. If you have this um, wave function, then this is what we call probability density of the particle. So the probability density, and um, we'll, we'll discuss a little bit more later what we mean by probability density. Um, uh, but that's a kind of what's uh, represented by histogram here. The probability density is given by the absolute squared of the wave function, which um, to be technical is this. It's the complex conjugate of the wave function times itself. That's what, that's what always absolute squared means. So this is the interpretation of wave function. So whatever else the wave function represents, um, this is correct. <laughs> so, um, and now to make it actually probably the density, we have to do something called the normalization, as in, yeah, so we'll talk about that later, but um, at a minimum, what you can say is that where this absolute value squared is greatest is where you have greatest likelihood of finding that particle there. That's why you have greatest likelihood of finding the particle here and here. It doesn't matter that it's negative because all you care about is the absolute value squared. So, um, that's, a, so that's a one of the things about the wave functions that people somehow correctly guess that. And um, this property will be important in doing other calculations like um, so calculations with the wave function um, 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 like um, like uh, measuring the, the average momentum, average energy, average position of something. So uh, let me point out one thing. So if you have a particle spread out like this, where would you say the average position of the particle is? In the middle, this is the average particle, right? This is my x average. Is the particle ever found at its aver average position? Yeah, yeah it's not. Um, it's just, something, but this is not surprising to anyone, right? When you have a specific distribution of the particle probability, then like sometimes you get that average position, you never have that. You can do the same, get the same thing with the energy. So yeah, so, all right, I, I don't think that's all that surprising. 